we will say hello to you. But let us start with the distinguished panelists and our important uh, remarks here. The objective of this uh, discussion will be to identify the added value that the European Startup Village Alliance may bring to uh, its participants and society. And uh, I want to ask each of you, maybe one by one, starting uh, with the gentleman there, I don't want to point fingers, but, uh, but let's see. Uh, you all basically represent really big uh, institutions and organizations and uh, networks. From your point of view, why would you say that this alliance is important uh, and why the memorandum that we have just signed, what is, what is the significant, uh, significance on it? Thank you, Mr. Yanulavich. Hi. So first of all, thank you for the invitation to be here with you. I am really glad to join Litenua Networks and the Startup Village. Uh, to close the previous session speaking about collaboration, uh, we really think that uh, everyone, but especially rural enterprises, rural SMEs, rural areas, needs to create a strong networks in order to help SMEs, to help startups to grow. You know, because it is not enough just to have a um, strong culture, we need uh, mass, critical mass, and we need uh, to share resources in order to uh, really get the knowledge needed for uh, grow and um, grasp the opportunities, you know. Um, that is what uh, networks are doing, helping in a method methodological way to uh, create those uh, opportunities and, and, and take profit of, of them. And networking is about trust. It's about culture, but also trust. And team, meaning we need a stable, and I mean a stable through the years, networks that can really um, create the uh, conditions, the environment, to uh, promote the investments from and the, the taking risk from the SMEs. And I will make a parallel, you know, in the education environment, we have universities and we know what is a university and they have a long life and a uh, very well known as to, to rules, you know, uh, and uh, we are creating something like that at the European level and the worldwide level uh, in the business ecosystem, okay? There, ha there has been for many, many hundreds of years business association, but not related to innovation. From 30 years ago, we are creating those kind of networks, focus on helping the innovation at business level. And we are maturing those networks. I, I, he I think that we have here a very an uh, excellent example of what those networks can be in the future. We are building that concept and how those networks are critical for the business uh, growth. Uh, and Lithuania is leading in that way. You know, Lithuania is uh, part of the board of directors of the European Cluster Alliance. You know that we are joining something like 1,000 business clusters across Europe, but, and Christina, is, she just left, but she's a cluster manager of the year. She's the best cluster manager at Europe at this moment, okay? And so uh, I think that you need to know and you need to be proud. I think we have mentioned this uh, once, once already in the morning. So yes, she is the manager of 2022, right? So Lithuania is a leading example, you say, in terms of ambition or in terms of uh, Actions. No, it's reality. It's happening now, and and you you uh, you need to uh, be proud, but also nurture it. You know, because uh, I think it's a also a good opportunity for Lithuania to continue growing and to take leadership position in agri food, but also in other areas. You know, it's happening. Mr. Radisic. 
From your perspective, why is the Startup Village Alliance important? What could it actually do? Well, first of all, many thanks. And uh, I'm so happy to be here in this panel and here to, to be in Vilnius. Um, well, before I answer to your question, if you allow me, I'll just give a very brief personal example. So I'm coming from a, from a very vibrant and dynamic city from the middle of a Pannonian plain in a crossroads between Central and Eastern Europe. Um, it is surrounded by beautiful agricultural potential. And every weekend I go with my family uh, some 30 kilometers away in a small village where we visit our garden and where we enjoy beautiful countryside. And what I notice there is that I speak with many people who have great potential. I speak with many people, with young people who are actually very much willing to do great and creative things and to bring innovation in their surroundings. And I agree with the commissioner when she said that it's all about people and it's all about potential. And what we actually noticed in the last several years is that those people with all the infrastructure potential that is brought to them, with all the, I would say, uh, uh, innovation around the corner, they can actually make difference. And that's why not only us in this room and those uh, colleagues who are with us online, but also many other initiatives are there to, to support Startup Village as a concept. And what we do in our network, but also what we also do in our organizational level, is to boost as much as possible collaboration and communication with players and actors who can actually make difference, such as these digital innovation hubs, such as clusters, and many other players who can actually support those people on the ground and give them opportunity to grow and prosper. So that's why this is important. And that's why today, today we mark very important milestone in future activities we will jointly take uh, as a group, as a network of networks, and that will actually we will do our best to support those young people to, to join us. So yes, innovation is out there and they can be with us and we will do our best to support them. I appreciate that you started with a personal example. I think it's always, uh, always nice and informative and instrumental in a way. Would you maybe have an example uh, of an innovation that would have been born in your region and that you know, you would want to be proud of and we would need to know about it so that we give even more examples to the audience. Well, there are many. I will not uh, count them because it will take a lot of time. But many innovation happening, for example, in bringing uh, technology solutions to farmers, to food producers, uh, to uh, 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 stakeholders that are actually in need for that kind of solutions is very present. And what we have noticed is that uh, uh, um, technology people and people who are predominantly in uh, production or in, in the farms are actually uh, starting to understand each other better. And that's additional advantage of Startup Village as a concept because uh, 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 now uh, those two uh, groups can understand each other better and can communicate better. And when they communicate better, young people, and we, we have heard what the minister said, she said that uh, we have to start with schools. I also noticed that in my university, when I talk with my students, uh, uh, they come from different rural areas and they do have many ideas. And many of them come back and they bring those ideas to life. So that's why uh, uh, besides uh, funding opportunities and many other opportunities that we will witness in months and years to come, it's also about uh, networking and that's why this alliance is very important. Sometimes we talk about farmers though, saying that they don't want to know about any innovations, about novelties, they just want to do their own thing and do not want to improve their everyday life activities. There is at least a stereotype in certain countries. Is that true for for your area and how do you think that problem could be well, tackled? Indeed, what, what do farmers usually like to see is, uh, as we call it, plug and play solutions, right? So they want to have a, a, a comprehensive solution that does the thing that they need in their fields. But what is also happening recently is that they do understand that uh, uh, they have to learn about new technologies, they, they have to uh, uh, collaborate with uh, 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 experts bringing those technologies. So they are becoming more and more willing 
to actually engage. And this is uh, another important uh, advantage that with such alliances that we are creating, we will actually foster even more this kind of uh, very dynamic uh, communications with them. Dr. Beers, would you relate to that? <laughs> yeah, I'm... Uh... <coughs> Uh, why did I sign this, this, this MOU why did, uh, as, as a representative of Smart AgriHubs? Let me tell some words uh, on Smart AgriHubs. Uh, we are focusing on agriculture and uh, on uh, digital innovation. These are the two main words. So agriculture means that we are in the rural area. If you, that's, that's definite. So we are interested in, let's say, other interesting uh, things that are happening in the rural area. Uh, Smart Agri Hubs is uh, basically we established a network of digital innovation hubs, network uh, really in the rural area. So we uh, currently we have 350, 350 uh, digital innovation hubs in the agricultural areas all over Europe. In every member state we are present and we have in uh, let's say every agricultural community we established such a uh, digital innovation hub. So we are in connection with the farmers over there, directly. It's all in the proximity of the farmers, as it, uh, is it mm. uh, mentioned. And uh, the, the objective of the, the, the task that this, 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 this digital innovation hub is to promote digital, digital uh, solutions in the agricultural sector. So taking it from uh, elsewhere from Europe and bringing it to the local uh, uh, farming community and also help farmers. These hubs are connected so they can use each other's, uh, let's say, latest experience and the state of the art from all over Europe. They are connected. And um, this connection is quite crucial. I, I, I experienced that, that people can uh, not only use the, the nice material that is in an innovation portal, but also can, can meet and speak to each other. That's really adding value. So uh, this... this uh, uh, these digital innovation hubs, they providing a set of services. And uh, one of the services is on uh, promoting, stimulating, facilitating startups. But to be honest, a lot of digital innovation hubs can, help, can use some help in that. Mm. So that's, for me, it's quite logic that we join forces with the smart villages. And this is a key competence and combine the, the forces. Uh, so that's, that's one way, so the, the, the smart villages can use the infrastructure in the direction of farming, and farming is by definition an area where a lot of startups are taking place, and uh, so that's, that's one of the connections. Another connection that I want to mention is that uh, for, for agriculture it's always important to have connection cross-sectoral. And in the, in the current situation, looking at the rural, it's about, uh, let's say, uh, eco ecosystem services, it's about landscape management, it's about uh, biodiversity. All those things are happening in the rural area, and that's where I think we also can, can uh, help each other, I would say. So I'm committed to, uh, to, to, to bring each of the digital innovation hub in connection with a smart, uh, with a, uh, a startup village. Uh, and, and more than that, I think uh, it's important and crucial for the coming decade, coming years, to connect the different networks. Uh, like my neighbor said, so we are all also discussing with Andy on how to collaborate between the networks, the network of networks. And I think that's where the key is. Thank you. Let us uh, ask Mr. Zinga to expand on this collaboration. Uh, what exactly are you doing to connect the different networks and why did you sign the memorandum? So, so let me share with, with all of you why I'm so excited about this startup alliance. So there are many startup networks out there, right? So, or startup activities. So there are many, many accelerators, there's clusters and all that. And we learned through the work at EIT Food, working with 300 partners from the Knowledge Triangle that I mentioned earlier, that it isn't just enough to make connections. Collaboration happens when you actually do a little bit more, when you're aligned, when you have trust, as someone mentioned earlier. And uh, this is where motivated partners together can really make magic happen. So in other words, it's not just enough to say, well, there's a really excellent accelerator that could really help us. 
if they're neither in, uh, in, in the capacity or capability to actually help in actual fact, or they don't want to, then it doesn't help anyone. So by virtue of having an alliance of aligned and motivated partners, we have a chance to do what I mentioned earlier, namely to say, when we work in the rural areas, we're looking at Agritech, but maybe there's a way across all of these different startup alliances to find a way to also bring food tech in, to also bring learning institutions to the, to the countryside, I think then we can we can make happen what we're discussing all the time, namely to overcome inequality, to build more more wealth also in the rural areas, to do economic development on all the good things that to raise salaries, employment, all those pieces that again require motivated and aligned partners. And all of us here are already motivated and aligned, but the more we add to this alliance, the better, because that is. Again, where all of this happens that I mentioned. So that's the synergy piece. Thank you, Mr. Jan Lavitches. Uh, how would you describe why the startup village idea is so attractive to you? Why did you sign the memorandum? Yeah, first, of course, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for the possibility to be here. It's very nice to see you quite often now in Vilnius. And uh, in general, you know, I fully agree with my colleagues. This is a mutual understanding between us. And to add something would be very difficult, but I will try to see through the industrial corner. Yeah, I'm representing the Lithuanian industrialists. It's a part of Business Europe. And in general, the more interconnections we will have, industry, agri-food, innovations, digitalizations, green tech, you know, in general, everything is combined. It's one community. Chicken or egg? Should we start from fertilizers produced in the greenest way through the hydrogen, for example, because agriculture needs uh, need the fertilizers nevertheless? Or we would finalize with the food for the people, you know. Everything is a one big chain. And uh, these possibilities, these opportunities, what we have now inside the EU, it really creates us to be really independent, really independent from the third countries. We can produce um, uh, to go up the, um, the fuel, which is uh, really green, grow here in our countries, which creates the added value here. This fuel we can use in the different fields to innovate uh, and um, to increase the value which we are creating here in Lithuania. In general, Lithuania creates 20% of GDP creating the industry. We have the agri-food with uh, creating around 8, 10% approximately. But we know that there are some countries around us, they doing up to 18%. These are huge possibilities to innovate, to digitalize, to digitalize, um, uh, let's say, agri, agri direction, and to be more competitive, more, let's say, uh, I would say so more greener in the different conditions, not on the green energy, but on the green uh, possibility to use um, less, um, less chemical uh, fertilizers. This means it's really a lot of possibilities for us to work together and to create added value here inside our Lithuania and European Union. I think all these changes about the information which help us in the future to be more competitive. You have also said that uh uh, you will see it from the industrialist point of view, and uh, Mr. Zinga has mentioned that there are many accelerators and many clusters and uh, has talked about the specifics of why this particular project is important. What about the industrialists' union? Uh, are you part of any other alliances and what are they and what has the benefit been? Yes, we have the Digital Innovation Hub, European Digital Innovation Hub, together with AgriFood, all together. We try to combine this synergy because nevertheless, the Everything must be done on the ground. Ground, it's really connected to the farmers. Yeah, and we need to find the cooperation. For example, we have the very good examples uh, in the southern areas in 2014. Lithuania, together with the German Fraunhofer Institute, created the first greenhouses, which was combined industry, agriculture. It was, uh, the project was, uh, in the sun area to reduce the density of the sun, and the benefits was very huge, you know. It was savings of 30% of the moisture, of the water. At the same time, 25%, uh, it was faster growing. And we combine uh, greenhouses, solar greenhouses, in a combination with automation, uh, automation, which was done for fertilizing, for everything. That means this is a real practical way how we can cooperate. And I hope, of course, not only in the southern areas, we will find the solutions how to work, but in Lithuania as well, 
to increase our digitalization and green transition and combine all these things and to say what I like to say it will be not one plus one will be two but will be three or four we need to combine some technologies and for this we need interconnections for this we need our uh, let's say cooperation in the different fields because we can support each other and to create the products which will be sustainable more efficient and of course more competitive but just to understand because this is a startup village startups are normally you know small companies that often get a lot of investment how do you see cooperation with startups here how could in big industrial companies participate is it mainly about investing and funding or what are the ways no I, I would say so maybe I will be not very popular on these directions but a lot of startups just spending the money you know we have creative ideas, very creative ideas, which is so far away from the industry, which is so far away from the reality. And sometimes uh, this money will be spent um, maybe for a long, long future. We would like to bring them, create the added value in existing sectors, which is a moving, but to make them more competitive, more green, more digitalized. And for this, we need to increase our real added value, but not just to create uh, some things which will be maybe not necessary now and maybe not necessary in the future, but just to upgrade existing directions uh, where the Lithuania and European Union is really competitive, but we need to be more competitive instead of third countries. This is a very, very interesting line of our discussion, but I hope we will have more opportunities throughout the day to talk about that, because the talking startup creators into the idea of, you know, maybe losing their idea and working on something else, that is something that... Oh, no, adding, adding okay. this idea in the right direction, I would say. Okay, so. okay. Uh, let us move to Ms. Reinmuth because we are nearly out. Uh, we have run away, run out of time nearly, but she's with us, I can see her. She's coordinator of the European Startup Village Hub of the University Alliances, head of Bioeconomy Office at University of Hohenheim. Ms. Reinmuth, thank you for joining us and thank you for sharing your thoughts. What would you see uh, the future collaborations that would be possible between the two alliances that you see and uh, between the Startup Village Alliance, which is the topic we are discussing here today? Yes, thank you for having me. Um, actually, there are a lot of uh, great points already made during the discussion. What I want to say is that um, here at the, the higher education institutions, what we can do is um, make students aware of actually the um, what, what is the business to business world all about? Because um, there was this point that um, they brought up that students have very creative ideas and they just spend the money. But if we make them aware what the industry is really about and uh, how the agricultural sector, for example, can contribute to that. So um, then I think we can be very successful. But um, as far as I'm aware of that, this business to business world is not really part of the higher education curricula currently. Why do I say that? So I come uh, from a university that has a strategic um, emphasis on bioeconomy. And bioeconomy relays on um, resources that are being produced in the agriculture sector. Um, so food first, of course, but then what's happening with the side uh, streams, what's happening with the residuals? So they can be upgraded into very valuable chemicals, platform chemicals, uh, resources for the industry. And if we can combine the network I think we can also create some sort of mentoring um, with wonderful industry partners that have the same aim, the same vision of the startups, and they, they frame them, they coach them in a sort of way and bring them into the right direction. So we can use the creativity of the startups to actually build great networks and great value for the industry as well, and still serve um, the, the food first thought, and it, this is very necessary, but we can open up also new opportunities opportunities for farmers. And if we're talking about digitalization, smart agri-hubs, that's perfect because the digital world is there to transport this information, to inform farmers what's possible to be produced out of their side streams, out of their residuals, and then there can be new networks can be established. And that's what I think is the greatest potential. And that's why we need to join forces because we as higher education institutions are responsible for making students aware of that, um, providing them the opportunity to even create ideas, be creative, um, have research questions. 
And if we join them with the real world and bring them together with real problems and the real uh, questions that are asked and the real demands of the industry, I think this is the potential we can really explore. I'm not sure whether the others agree, but that's what I heard throughout the discussion and where I would really draw on, would like to draw on. Thank you so much. I think we would have to stop here because we have learned uh, so many about so many interesting ideas and I believe that they will be continued throughout the day because we have uh, many panel discussions coming in, keynote presentations too. Now we have uh, summed up why the memorandum and the startup village idea is so crucial. You have shared your views and many interesting points were made. Thank you everybody so very much. Uh, thank you Ms. Reinmuth who, have, who has joined us online and I think this is the moment to just thank all of our panelists. Thank you. Thank you.